You're in college. You're living on your own. But classroom learning is not all that's happening on U.S. campuses. We all have a lot more to learn. It is estimated that one in five women on college campuses has been sexually assaulted during their time there. One in five. It's totally unacceptable. A young woman entering college is at the most vulnerable time in her life, not knowing what to expect or who they will meet. There will be no warning about potential risks. Nobody understands this reality better than Jeannie Cleary's family. We got back at uh, 2.30 in the afternoon. There was a police car in our driveway. And uh, we didn't know what had happened. Thought possibly the uh, burglar alarm had gone off, although uh, Catherine, who always Let me explain house. what happened. Our taxi drew up to the door. There were the two policemen with Catherine. Catherine, they were, being, they were restraining her. And when I asked, was it Grandma? And they said, no. I knew it was something so horrible. It would change our lives eternally. And so I said, please don't tell me until I sit down. And as I came down this long corridor, I said the Our Father out loud. And then I finished, and I sat down, and I said, OK. And they told me. The news was as bad as she feared. Connie Cleary's daughter, Jean, a freshman at Lehigh College, had been raped and murdered. Connie's grief forced her to take action. I can remember the week after wanting to do something to, to spare others of this horrible happening. The Cleary Act became federal law in 1990, mandating that schools receiving federal funds must report all crime on campus to the FBI. The students, faculty, and employees on the campuses will be informed so that they know about the crimes around them and then they can take the precautions. It will not be an effective law unless the campus families try to protect themselves. But the Cleary Act was no match for life on campus. The newfound freedom, the acquaintances you don't really know, the parties, all of which contribute to sexual assault. The flyer is titled Top 10 Ways to Get Away with Rape. It was found in a boys' bathroom in McBride Hall in Miami University. Among the ideas on the flyer, putting a drug in a woman's drink, wear protection, and practice makes perfect were many other ideas listed. But it all started right here on the U of A campus when one student wrote three words on a poster board. You deserve rape. Frat boys from Delta Kappa Epsilon at Yale University were filmed doing a ritual to initiate new pledges. Check it out. No means yes. Yes means anal. No means yes. No yes means anal. No means yes. Yes means anal. Did you guys catch that? No means yes. And yes means anal. Fraternities across the country are doing their own advertising when it comes to getting a woman in their beds against her will. What is rape? Rape would be when someone forcefully has sex with another person. Any sex that is not consensual, doesn't matter if it's a guy or a girl. I would say it as any sort of penetration, um, be it male to male, male to female, female to male, female to female. More specifically, it's penetration of the vagina with by anything, objects, fingers, penis, anything, it is unwanted and it is unwanted. And there's also a, um, there's a lack, an element of a, a lack of consent there. What is consent? Consent to one form of sexual activity can't be seen to imply consent to any other form of sexual activity. If somebody kisses you, you have consent to kiss. But you can't have consent for anything if the person you're with is incapacitated, drunk or drugged. 
Oh. Okay, okay. Slow down. Men okay. assaulting okay. women okay. is not stop. the only problem. Stop. I asked you to stop. Don't rush me. Stop. Hold them. Hey, don't touch me without asking first. Don't be a passive bystander. I'm gonna come with you then. Mama, how are you doing tonight? Thank God Taylor was yeah. there, because he really gave me a way out. You, know, you could argue that, that the rules on, on rape and sexual assault are, are complicated. They're really not. They can be boiled down to this. If you want to have sex with a man or a woman, a partner, get their permission. Just past my 18th birthday, I was date raped. That is how I lost my virginity. I was like beyond inebriated, like slurring my words and like having a hard time. I was like the running joke. Oh my God, why did this happen to me? Blaming myself. Can we stop telling girls that they shouldn't get raped and instead tell men to stop raping women? If someone rapes you, it is the rapist's fault, not yours. I wish I had had someone that told me that wasn't my fault and that I should speak up. Gloria Allred, nationally known activist attorney for women, is telling victims of sexual assault how to speak up. I was victim to sexual violence as a freshman at Fourth Moore. My sophomore year at USC, I was raped by a fellow student. My freshman year, I was raped at a party during the first week of school. The weekend after my first week of classes as a freshman at Occidental College, I was raped by a male student. I was raped during my freshman year at Occidental by a male student. I was raped my freshman year at Occidental College. I was sexually assaulted by another student at Occidental College. At the beginning of my final semester, a fellow student raped me in my own bedroom. They found him guilty of rape and gave him a one semester suspension. An administrator who had never once spoken to me about the case decided to change his punishment to a book report and community service. I was raped by a classmate in the dorm provided to me by UConn. A hearing took place the following month, and the perpetrator that I had reported was found guilty on four counts, that he was to be expelled. Two weeks later, I was eating in a dining hall when the perpetrator sat down next to me and threateningly grazed my elbow in an act of obvious defiance. Shocked, I left, feeling confused, violated, traumatized, and vulnerable. The administration had kept the findings the same, but changed the sanction and readmitted my rapist. The only explanation I was given was that the Vice President of Student Affairs felt that expulsion for having raped me was too severe. How did the administration at University of Connecticut respond? The suggestion that the University of Connecticut, as an institution, would somehow be indifferent to or dismissive of any report of sexual assault is astonishingly misguided and demonstrably untrue. The question isn't, you know, do you have a problem? The question is, is your institution confronting the problem with, with, with honesty, with, with integrity? Early this morning, a complaint was filed on behalf of a number of victims with the Office of Civil Rights against Occidental College for violating Title IX. The complaint documents violations... Campus sexual assault is happening from coast to coast, including military colleges, religious institutions, public and private colleges. 28 schools under scrutiny for sexual violence right now related to Title IX violations, including Dartmouth, including the University of North Carolina, Princeton, uh, Harvard Law School as well. Why these schools don't properly investigate these situations, they kind of just brush it under the rug. And obviously... It's because these administrators don't want their university to have a bad name. Right. Now, you know what gives you a really bad reputation? If you don't investigate rapes. Things are changing. Lisa Simpson brought a Title IX complaint against University of Colorado Boulder after she was raped at a party for the football team. The university paid out over $5 million in penalties, and the university president, athletics director, and football coach resigned. Things are changing. Activists across the country are bringing sexual assault to people's attention and demanding a change. 
Your group can act now to stop sexual assault on your campus. Demand a committee comprised of students and administrators to address the issue by creating a sex education program that is mandatory for every student at your school. Guess what I'm going to do to her. And young men are changing. Real men treat women with respect. Be a part of the solution. By not saying something, kind of being a part of the situation as well. Be educated and try to educate others. Get educated on what sexual assault is. Um, you know, some things that you might not think are assault actually are. We've got to teach young people, men and women, to be brave enough to stand up and help put an end to these crimes. We've especially got to teach young men to show women the respect they deserve. I want every young man in America to know that real men do not hurt women. Stop it. You're making all white guys look bad. Stop it because you're making all black guys look bad. Stop it. You're making all Hispanics look bad. Stop it. You're making all chemistry majors look bad. Stop it. You're making all Asian guys look bad. I will sign a presidential memorandum creating the White House Task Force to protect students from sexual assault. And we've got powerful friends, and they just reauthorized the Violence Against Women Act, including a new provision called SAVE, the Campus Sexual Violence Elimination Act. We dedicate this film to Connie Cleary, who devoted her life to turning her loss into a powerful tool to get justice for victims of sexual assault. Join the feminist majority and activists across the country in the campaign to end campus sexual assault. <laughs>